I gave you the presenter role. And yeah, exactly on time, let's welcome Nicolò with his presentation. Take it away. Okay, thank you. So, hi everyone. And as you can see, this is my presentation and that's pretty much it because this is the only slide. But before we get into it, the actual slide, let me say a few words about myself. I am Nicola Venerandi, the leader of the Consistency Goal, as you might know at this point. And I also have like a YouTube channel where I post stuff about KDE, which you can find by Googling Nicola V on YouTube. And I'm also in the VDG and promo rooms for, you know, promotion stuff and that kind of, that sort of stuff. And I want to share you, with you a video that I've done regarding consistency. It was published yesterday on my channel. So just give me a second that like this, and we should all see it together. Let's try it. Okay, and that was it. Let me actually get back to the presentation. And I've seen some people saying, let's hope that YouTube doesn't block the music, but actually this music is done by a KDE contributor. So it's it comes from KDE itself. And I think that's really cool. So uh, I've said that this is my only slide, but uh, that's actually a lie because there's a second slide. Let me get to that one. It's completely empty, so I thought that it didn't count. So the, first, the thing that I wanted to talk about mainly about consistency is design consistency, or why, um, how do we design something that's as complex as a desktop while, while uh, keeping things consistent, pretty much. So what we do is that we get to the whiteboard and we get a pen like this. Let me try it out. And of course it broke just before, <laughs> just give me a second, I know this. Hello, I'm back, I hope you hear me. Of course everything breaks when you actually try to use it, but still, hi. And so I, as I was saying, we get to the drawing board and what we try to do is draw something that should represent our uh, desktop environment while uh, not actually drawing anything from the desktop environment. I'll give you an example. So something that we might want to draw is like this thing, like this. And this could potentially be anything, of course. And this is the most general uh, concept that we have that should be applied everywhere in the desktop. And mostly what we get from this is rounded corners. So we know that our design is going to have rounded corners regardless of what it's applied to. And if we decided, if we decide how much rounded should the corners be, then that is going to be the design that's going to be used everywhere. So this is the most general idea that we can draw on a whiteboard without actually going into the actual use cases. And then we can decide to take that concept, make it a bit bigger so you can actually say it like this, and then uh, try to apply it to something a bit more specific like windows or applets, 
could be anything still at this point. So of course, if it's Windows, you, we might want to have a title, some buttons, some other buttons. And usually at the top, you have like the most general buttons regarding the content, whereas in the content, you have the action themselves and the content, of course. So we want, we might want to take all of the title information about the thing itself and general actions and include them in a um, separated design element, which is going to be a header like this. And right now we still don't know what this header is going to be used for. It could be anything, but of course, if we have a header, we might as well get a footer because we might want to have some um, actions and information that are at the bottom, such as, you know, the st status bar or in fonts actions that are actually closer to the thumb of the user. So we also get a footer. And what we've seen is that it's also really useful to have a sidebar so that you have a central content, but also some side content that helps you understand or navigate through the central content. So like this, and then you have actual content here. So this is the most general idea I could think of for that desktop environment. And the question is, where do we use this? And before uh, the consistency goal, uh, every element had like its own design, but now this simple design is used pretty much everywhere. If you look at all applets, they use this design. Or if you go look at, I don't know, uh, not applets, but uh, Windows, we now use this design with the header, the footer, the sidebar. There are still some tweaking to be done in application like Dolphin, where the sidebar is um, inside, um, either not divided by the line on the right or inside of a frame. So that's something we are working on, but the general, the general idea is this one. And we also use it in dialogues or uh, the stuff you call when you actually pop up um, uh, uh, overlay sheets, sorry. They're called overlay sheets in Kurigami. So you got this thing that pops up and it has the header, the footer and the content. It does not have a sidebar yet, but it's mostly because it's smaller than other components. So usually we don't need it. So this is the first component that we can think of. And then we might say, sure, this is cool and we can draw a lot of things, but when you actually draw the content, you might want to have some preferred kind of content, which could be, I don't know, clicked, focused, hovered. There are many um, stuff that uh, should indicate that the user is interacting with that specific type, uh, smaller content in the general content window. So what we've done is that we got back to our four lines with rounded corners. And we said, okay, so we want uh, the content that the user is interacting with to be uh, more visible. So we are going to give it a different color and we choose the highlight color, which is blue. Of course, you can change it if you don't like blue for any reason. Um, I won't uh, say that blue is the best color, but it is, so please don't. And we're going to have a solid blue outline plus a bit of transparency in the inside so that it pops up even more. If it was just the outline, wouldn't be so visible. And now you have here like the icon that you're selecting or stuff like that. And just like this, we have a design for windows or stuff like that and a design for uh, content that the user is interacting with or stuff like that. Now there's an issue with this. If you actually try to make this in the panel, as you know, Plasma has a, as I hope you know, Plasma has a panel. So you have like an icon, another icon, another icon, another icon, the Plasma icon plus the task manager. You mount to that user things per icon. No, because we actually comment this specific. So we can just draw it like this. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not drawing particularly pretty, but. And the issue is that it doesn't look good. And the reason it doesn't look good is that we've got a frame, which is the panel, and inside of it, that's and inside of it, there's even another 
uh, in our frame. I hope everything is going right with the <laughs> presentation. And inside of it, there's uh, another frame, which is the highlight. So this is an issue, and it's why we designed another kind of highlight, which is this one. So the outer line became a strong blue line at the top, and then there's transparent bluish in the center. And just like this, we have designed a new highlight like this, which fit much better into smaller flames. But now we have an issue. We started off with a cool concept of how to indicate that uh, content is being highlighted. And now we have two. So when do we use one and when do we use the other? So what we need to do right now is step back and think, when do we use this one? And when do you use this one? And the best idea to discriminate between these two is to say, okay, this one is going to the left, is going to be used when there's a big frame and we're selecting just one content inside a big frame. Whereas the one in the right it is to be used when there's a smaller frame that has a side near the highlight. The highlight is going to attach visually using this blue line to that side and the highlight element, which looks simply prettier. And that's very fair. We now have an highlight as well. And now that we have two components like this, we can move on and actually apply them. And here we have the first success story. Applets. During the first few years of consistency, we completely redesigned pretty much all applets. So if we think that you know, we've just decided that the general look is, the, is going to be this one, so let's draw it as an example. And then we might want to have a sidebar, so let's add the sidebar as well. And of course the header, so let's add that one. The header is going to have a title, some actions, some uh, minor actions and then there's going to be the content like this and maybe a list to the left because why not and maybe one of the content is going to be highlighted so it will have the consistent highlight we decided on and maybe also the list will be highlighted so it will be like this and if you look at this if you think this is the highlight the content i don't know i didn't draw it perfectly but this is the calendar This is exactly the design of the calendar. If you open it up, the newest, we just uh, redesigned it. So of course, this is not what we've done when we decided to redesign the calendar, but that's the general, general idea behind it. Header, content, highlights, and before the redesign, it was not like that. The highlight was uh, didn't have rounded corners, it was just filled, and there was no sidebar, no header, stuff like that. It wasn't it was inconsistent with the rest of the haplets, but now it is. And if we draw another one, this time, I don't know, a bit taller and wider, and add rounded corners, we can have the header, the title, actions, maybe a footer with other actions. And this is pretty much all widgets of the system tray. The system tray looks like, like this. There's usually, usually also a list with one element being highlighted, and that's, I don't know, sound applet or the volume one. That I just said the same thing, I meant Wi-Fi, sorry. Or uh, the clipboard or et cetera, I could go on. So we took applets, we took some general concept that we had, and we applied them for all applets, and now they're consistency, just like magic. But of course, it's very pretty when things go well, but they can also go wrong. So let's start actually a failure story of one time where we screwed up. And that is views. Uh, sorry, views. And specifically switching between them. So let's take an example application that we decided was going to have this look. And let's say, okay, so as an application maker, I want to switch between views. And the header, as I said, and uh, maybe a footer, nah, let's 
stay with Adafruit right now, but we have some content. And I want to implement something to switch pages. As, as an example, if you have a clock, you want to switch between the alarm pages, the time zone settings, stuff like that. Switch between them. That's very simple. And what we've, this, uh, what we've uh, thought about is uh, we can do something like making a list of all views in the header, and then you can just switch between them, and the current header is going to be highlighted with the all round, rounded corners highlight, which makes sense. You have the bigger frame, which is the header, and inside of it, the smaller frame, which is the selected view. And this is a possible design, let's call it A. And then there's also another possible design. Let's make this one with rounded corners, sorry. These rounded corners are not that pretty. And same thing as before, but now we are actually on the phone. And when you are on a phone, you want actions to be close to the user. So we thought, okay, so the views need to be on a footer because that's closer to the user thumb. So same thing, and we put the list of views. But now there's a problem. The footer has just the views, which means that it's a frame with a smaller frame inside of it, which would be the highlight. So we need to use the other one. So not this look, but the other look, which is the one like this. Is it working? Like this. And this is option B. There are both valid options, and we basically need to choose whether we're going to use this highlight or this one. And uh, at the end, like we discussed a lot, and eventually B1, and this is the current uh, design of the component that manages um, uh, swiping between views, which is called uh, uh, swipe navigator, sorry. And then we actually take a KDE application and say, okay, so we have this component, which is the um, view navigator, we we, which we just designed and looks good. And let's go see how it's actually used because in theory, we have this flowchart, which is we design something. I'm too fast for the design. And then we actually do a component like this. And finally, we use it. So in this case, the design part of it was very confused because there was no clear consensus. And even in the MR that introduced the Swipe Navigator, there were some criticism. But still, we introduced a component. Next step, we need to use it. If you actually go to see um, Plasma Mobile applications like the clock, you will see that they have like the, uh, the, um, the views uh, represented by three icons, three as an example, icons with labels under them. And in order to show that they're active, they don't use our swipe navigator. They use a different color. And they say, okay, you know that this is the active view because it's blue instead of gray, which makes sense. It was a possibility. And problem is, uh, it's not the component that we've just designed like five minutes ago. So what happened is that uh, the component that we've done didn't fit the needs of the people actually making apps, and that's a big issue. And I think the big issue here is that we left with a confused design state because we didn't uh, discuss enough even with the people that were going to create the apps using the component. And the result is that those people didn't use the component that we had just created for them. And more importantly, they have decided to um, show that a view is active using a different color for the text and the icon. And if you go back to the three kind of highlights that we discussed, which was this one and then, and then this one, in no way did we say, sure, let's also change the color of the icon and of the text. That's something that was not discussed and surely it was not in the mocks up mockups and stuff. So when it actually came down after all of this discussion to actually implementing something, what we implemented is completely different to the components we have and what we've discussed. 
And this is not to say that uh, app makers got this wrong. Obviously, they didn't get it wrong. If they use this look, it means that the look that we had designed for them didn't fit them. And that's an issue on our side. So what we can do regarding this is go back to the whiteboard, uh, fetch those um, contributors of application that should be using this component and tell them, okay, let's try to figure something together that both uh, is pretty for your applications and also works, uh, you know, actually works and also fits our consistent design idea that we got since the beginning, which is having these two kind of highlights. And uh, that's pretty much it for this web navigator. So this is an issue that we are working on because it's not nice to only say what we've done right. Let's also say what we've done wrong. So next topic is what we can do, not just to have some design consistency, but also to have code consistency. And uh, my main takeaway here is components. I gotta say that I will not use big blue bat as a way to make art from now on. Okay, components. And uh, the thing is that when we do something that we realize could be used in many parts, we should do a component that uh, will make it actually able to be used multiple times. And let's see a couple of examples when we got this right and a couple of examples when we got this wrong. So the first example of us getting it right is the hamburger menu, which has just recently landed into Plasma hamburger. And that is, we have this issue, which is KDE has some complex ac applications, even simple application like PDF viewer or file manager are actually very complex. And we need a way to present it so that it's consistent and easy for the user. And we've done the hamburger menu, which is like adaptive. So depending on what you have on your toolbar, we, cha it, we change the content of the hamburger menu. And it also allows to hide and show the menu bar. And it also allows to look through all applications. So it empowers the user to actually have a simple um, layout by default, but also being able to use all functionalities of your application. And it's a component that can be used anywhere on Q widgets applications. Of course, we cannot like expect uh, third party applications to like this, like adapt our components. Like it won't happen, but we can do our best to be consistent throughout our vision. Another example, if uh, big button lets me draw it is the hud which is that very new component that pops up when you control alt high and it's basically a search box when you actually search through the actions and it's it solves exactly the same issue as before we have complex application we need to break it down in an easy uh, way for the user and we let the user search between the actions and that's really useful. And this component can be used everywhere in Q widgets applications. And the third one, which I actually forgot, ah, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, which I had forgotten about is the expand, expandable, expandable tooltips, which is even newer. I think I saw it in the last uh, blog post from Nate uh yesterday and what this that no mm, last week sorry and what this does is basically you hover an element you will get a small tooltip saying what that element is and then press shift to learn more and you press shift you get a bigger pop-up saying okay this element is to be used for x it works like y and so on and again, that's because we have complex application that we need to break down in a simple way to the user. So if a user don't recognize an icon, just move the mouse over it, wait for the um, tooltip, and then press shift to see all the content in the tooltip. And this is consistent throughout KDE applications. So 
this we've done right. So uh, as for things we've done wrong, of course, the swipe navigator goes into that list. And um, it kind of goes into that list because in this, this time we actually have the component. The problem is that apps are not using it. So that's an issue. And another one is uh, chats like this. And the issue with chat is that uh, we are currently working on at least three or four chat applications. And if you look at them, chat bubbles, as an example, they all are different. And that's very annoying because you're doing the same thing, with the same concept, displaying messages, and they all behave differently. What we should do is try to do a component like a chat bubble, as an example, that can be used throughout KDE um, chat applications. And that would make sense. It's just an idea, uh, just to represent the bad side of it. There's the good side and bad side. Of course, it's more difficult. You can, uh, it, it will take more effort to do it, but maybe at the end, it will be worth it. So, and regarding components, uh, I wanted to say that there's a, uh, billion dollar mistake that was introduced in computers that killed consistency and that is the control c and control v shortcuts because now every time that you want a component that's from another application you just you know copy paste make it work and that's it and what you do in that way you introduce uh, redundancy in the code and if you change your component is going to be different from the one you just copy pasted from, which means that different applications will have the same design elements, maybe copying a bit from each other, but there will, they will be fun fundamentally different. And that kills consistency as a whole. How much time do I have left? And next thing is wallpapers. So let's actually type down wallpapers. And this is the final point, and then I'm done. And the thing is, wallpapers, you might say, uh, yeah, sure, they're just something that stays in the background and should be pretty enough to ignore it. They're not, because they also, from a pro promotional point of view, uh, give um, a feel to your uh, desktop. So if we go from one style of wallpapers to a completely different one, we lose that look and consistency. And that's why pretty much all Plasma 5 wallpapers are all based on this simple design element, which is the triangle. If you look at all of them, they're all made from triangle, except one that's hexagons, but we don't talk about that one. So triangles everywhere. And that was our look and feel. And it pretty much roughly stayed the same throughout Plasma 5. But now we actually want to change our look because once in a while it's worth it. And we are doing a wallpaper contest for Plasma 5.23. So stay tuned because in a few days we will announce our, on our Twitter and social media that there will be a wallpaper contest when where everyone will be able to send their own, own wallpapers and maybe be selected for Plasma 5.23. There will be three winners that will get three months free of uh, Blender Cloud, which is uh, both a learning tool and also is full of assets to learn more about 3D rendering. So it's a big opportunity for artists to expand their knowledge. So if you're an artist and you want to characterize look and feel of wallpapers, this is something that might interest you. And that was actually pretty much it. So let's delete everything and say the final thing, which is questions. Okay. Oopla. Hello. Hello, Nicolo. So we have two questions for now. 
so the first one is more like um, a comment, but also a question from Felipe. is uh, is about like uh, talking about components. We should definitely have a Kirigami dot settings page or set something like that. Yes. I totally agree, and it's never enough components, in my opinion. Someone will disagree, especially those that have to maintain those components. But if you have a specific idea of either how it should look or behave, then try to write it down. There's the HIG documenting those sort of stuff. Those, so that's something that can get you started. And then you can actually try to contact, like, either VDG or trying to find a developer if you don't know how to implement it uh, in QML for Kirogami. And if you know how to implement it, then we can just discuss it and then you can get started. Okay. Um, thanks. So there is another question from Marco asking, are there cases where there is too much consistency? Uh, for example, uh, cases where things are showed up uh, are showed upon a visual model that doesn't completely fit and become confusing. How to spot them? So yes, there is, uh, which is something that I don't usually talk about for reasons. <laughs> and as a practical example of it, if you open up kickoff right now, bottom left, you will see that it has a blue line to indicate that it's active. And then next to it, there's the task manager where you have the top line, but also the blue um, uh, background over it. And the reason mm -hmm. is that it would be, in my opinion, very confusing to have both kickoff open with that highlight and the task manager with your open window with highlight, because the highlights should indicate the one content you're interacting with, and instead it's two or something like that. It simply doesn't look good, which doesn't mean that we won't do it in the future. I think that Marco himself proposed to do it. It, it would be fair. But uh, it's just an example to show that sometimes it might be an issue to use the same exact thing everywhere. And of course, the real question is, when do we spot those cases? And it's not easy at all. And there, of course, isn't just one answer for everything. And we need to go case by case and, of course, try to ask to actual users, uh, hey, this is our design. Can you uh, navigate through it, or does this consistent uh, UI element confuse you? That's the best I can think of. OK. Um, there are no other questions right now. Uh, are there any? I guess there are several buffs going, uh, which will uh, be in the, during the next days. Do you remember some specific dates, something you want to advertise even more? Uh, right now, actually, no, because I haven't yet set up the consistency both because I'm a terrible goalkeeper. But except for that, uh, the actual date will pop up shortly, I think, and uh, then we'll have a nice both. So stay tuned. I think that uh, both are mostly for people that are very interesting in the topic. So if you go to the both page and you press F5 tomorrow, it should be there. 